Hi there, welcome to High School Maths Not Code at UK. Today we're going to look at the 2017 um, National 5 Paper 1. That's non-calculator paper. So let's get started with question 1. So we've got a little functions question. We're given that f of x equals x squared plus 3x. So f of negative 5. You're taking the x values and replacing them with the negative 5. So we've got negative 5 squared plus 3 times negative 5. Negative 5 squared um, is 25. And... Ne 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. 25 other negative 15 is 10. Nice straightforward start um, to the 2017 paper. Okay, question 2. The number of calls received by the police was recorded over 10 days. The results are shown below. Find the semi and quartile range. Okay, so first thing we've got to do is check that these numbers are in order. They look like they are good. Okay, so we've got 10 numbers all together. What we want to do is split the list into half first. So five per half, one, two, three, four, five. And once we've done that, we're going to look at the lower half. There's five numbers in the lower half. So we're going to split it to two, one side, two in the other. And the number in the middle that's left over there will be our Q1. The number in the middle here will be our median or Q2 and, and the same for the upper half, two in each half and the one in the middle here is going to be our Q3, our upper quartile. So the semi-interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1 over 2. So we'll get 250, take away 218 divided by 2, that is what, 32 divided by 2 which is 16. Okay, good. Uh, question three, one and five sixths oh, divided by three over four. Okay, so uh, first thing I would do here, or you have to do here, is convert to top heavy. So uh, one times six is six, add on to top is 11. Uh, so we've got 11 over six divided by three over four. And that gives us 11 over six. So the process from dividing uh, a fraction is to Flip the second fraction and change to multiply, so we're times them by 4 over 3. 11 times 4 is 44, 6 times 3 is 18, top times top, bottom times bottom, and that does simplify, they're both even numbers at the very least, so if we half them, we get 22 over 9. That doesn't simplify anymore, so common um, factor between those two numbers, so we are going to change it into a mixed number, so how many 9s go into 18? Well, that would be 2, with a remainder of 4 over 9. Brilliant. Okay, uh, question four, expand and simplify. So we get 2x multiplying the whole bracket, then 3 multiplying the whole bracket. So 2x times x squared, 2x cubed. 2x times negative 4x is negative 8x squared. 2x times 1 is plus 2x. 3 times x squared is plus 3x squared. 3 times negative 4x is negative 12x. And 3 times 1 is 3 plus 3. We then have to collect like terms. We've only got one cubed term. That's the 2x cubed. We've got a negative 8x squared and a plus 3x squared. Uh, that gives you negative 5x squared. And we collect those two together. The x terms, we've got plus 2x and a minus 12x. So that's going to be a negative 10x or minus 10x altogether. And then the number term at the end to finish off. Okay, a little vectors question or 3D coordinates. Uh, so we've got a square base pyramid. Placed on top of a cube, okay, telling us here that that coordinate is 6, 0, 0. So that, if, that's the, if this is a cube on bottom, then this means this is 6 by 6 by 6. And so I'll add that into the diagram, diagram just now. Point C is directly above the centre, right down the coordinates of B and C. Okay, so B is this coordinate up here that will be probably a little bit easier first. So we have to go on the diagram, 0 along, okay, so picturing uh, the kind of, it's a little bit, you know, uh, of the it's, it's very hard to visualize these diagrams at first so you have to follow the three-dimensional plane um of the diagram so zero along to get to b so the first coordinate is zero along the x-axis but then we have to go back because we're going to the back of the cube and um, so we're going back six places because the cube is six by six by six and then we've got to go up six places as well okay now um, we're doing the same kind of thing for coordinate C. Uh, do, 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 let's see, point C, height of the cube. The height of the pyramid is half of the height of the cube. Okay, so the height of the pyramid is three. Um, so this, that's going to come into play when we want to find the height. So 
In terms of how far along we have to go, well, it's right in the middle of the shape, so we have to go three along and then three back. So that's the x and y coordinate, three along, three back. And then the cube takes us up to about this point here on the top surface of the cube. That would be six up. But we've got to go another three up because the, the pyramid is half the height of the cube again. So it's uh, six plus three, which is nine. That's your two coordinates there. Okay, uh, question six, we've got a straight line question. Find the equation of the line AB in simplest form. Okay, so we'll have to find the gradient first. That's your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And uh, I'm going to go for x1, y1, x2, y2. You can do that the other way around. It'll still give you the same answer. So negative 2 minus 6 on top for the y coordinates and 3 minus minus 1. On the bottom, we get negative 8 over 4, so m equals negative 2. Um, we then use the y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. There are alternative ways of doing this, but I'm just going to choose this um, because we've not got a y-intercept, so I'll call that in my AB, AB value. Um, I could, again, use this coordinate if I wanted to for a and b. I've just chosen the one, negative 1 and 6 um, because that was the first one that came to my eye. Um, so y minus 6 equals negative 2, bracket x, negative, negative 1 will be a plus 1 in the bracket um, for your a value. So y minus 6 equals negative 2x plus, no, minus 2. So the negative 2 times the 1 does, does give you a, ne uh, a negative 2. Uh, and then add 6 to both sides to get negative 2x plus 4 as our final equation. Okay, uh, question 7. Triangle DEF, uh, given sine E, so effectively this is given as the angle of E, but then it's taking that angle and um, carrying out the sine operation. So we have the value and we don't need to calculate that, that's why it's in the non-calculator paper. So let's have a look at how we manage this. Area of the triangle, area of the triangle, we need two sides and the angle in between. So um, that works out quite well for us. The formula from the area is half AB sorry, from the formula sheet, a half AB sine C. Sine C is what we're really looking for. So um, rather than calling this E, I'm going to call this sine C. That's my, my angle, and that's my two corresponding sides. Um, so uh, the area would be a half times the 8 times the 12 times the sine of C, which we um, in this case was the E value. Okay, so sine of C was sine of E. Uh, sine of E, we were given the diagram. So if we then go ahead, half times 8 times 12 times sine of E, the whole thing, the whole value of sine of E was two thirds. So we don't need a calculator to calculate that. Trying to do this in the easiest possible order, half of 8 is 4, and two thirds of 12, well, 12 divided by 3 is 4, times 2 is 8, so we get 4 times 8, which is 32 centimetres, or squared centimetres. Okay, okay. Uh, Question eight, solve algebraically. We've got an inequality here, so I'm going to multiply out the bracket first. 15 plus 3x minus 6. We're then going to collect like terms on that right-hand side, so it's 3x. 15 take away 6 is a positive 9, and then we're just going to start the balancing process. So loads of different ways to do this. It's really entirely up to you what you feel comfortable um, with. So I'm going to take away 19 from both sides first, and I get 3x take away 10. I'm going to take away 3x, which gives me a negative value. So I get negative 2x equals negative 10. The next step, I'm going to have to divide by a negative. If I divide by a negative, I have to flip the arrow. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 would be 5. So we end up with x is less than 5. Uh, just remember, flip that arrow quite a common mistake to forget that stage there. Okay, uh, question 9. In the diagram shown below, ABE is a tangent to a circle. A angle DBE is 58 degrees. So that's the information given. Calculate the size of angle cab, CAB, one that's shaded here. Okay, so most of these questions, uh, the working is completed within the diagram. So use the diagram effectively. The, the fact that ABE is a tangent means that this radius line plus the tangent, uh, those two intersect the right angle. So this is a right angle here and this is a right angle here. And um, you can see there's a full uh, 180 degrees for the straight line altogether. Now, if this is 58 degrees, that leaves 32 degrees for the, this angle here, because those two have to add up to 90. And the inside, if we look at the inside tri uh, triangle here, so that's from D to O to B, that is isosceles. We've got O to D and O to B are exactly the same length. 
And actually, when we look at it, O to B and O to C are also the same length. All three of these lines start from the middle of the circle and go to the outside of the circle. So they're all radius um, or radii. Now, that uh, introduces some important features. So if this is 32, then that also has to be 32 because it's isosceles. So that's 64 all together. That lays, what, 116 degrees here. So that the triangle adds up to 180. And one, if that's 116 degrees here, this would be a straight line. So that would be 64 degrees in here too. So we've got another isosceles triangle on this side. We have to split the what whatever's left over from 180 between these two. Um, so with the 180 minus the 64, that would be 116. And that's going to leave us 58 degrees for each of these corners here. Again, this is a straight line angle here. So 50, 180 minus 58 would give us 122 degrees. This one has got to add up to 90, so this one's also got to be 32 degrees because of the tangent. And these two, 1, 2, 2, and 32, if we add them together, it gives us 154. Subtract that from 180, and we get 26 degrees. Okay, so lots of different angle properties come in there. Um, mainly, you're looking for isosceles triangles and right angles um, within these questions. If you can spot them, then that helps you a, a lot in terms of working through to get your final answer. Okay. Uh, change the subject of the formula f equals t squared plus 4b over c to b. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do there is uh, multiply both sides of the equation by c. So f times c equals t squared plus 4b. And then we no longer have that fraction to deal with. We're looking to get the b term on its own. So I'm going to try and isolate the 4b um, as my priority. So I'm going to take away t squared from both sides. And that gives me f, f c minus t squared equals 4b almost there we just need to divide both sides by four so fc minus t squared all divided by four equals b we can flip that around and um, just so it's the the subject of the formula is at the left hand side to get our final answer okay uh algebraic fractions so we've got three over a squared minus two over a we want to express it as a single fraction in simplest form so we're, we're adding or subtracting we need a common denominator a few different ways to do this. The lowest common denominator here would be a squared. Um, we've already got an a squared on the bottom here, so the first fraction is going to stay the same, but the second fraction, we're going to have to multiply by a on top and bottom to get 2a over a squared and make that an equivalent fraction. Once you've got to that stage, we can bring the two fractions together over the common denominator and check to see if there's anything that simplifies. There, there isn't anything really there that we can simplify any further, so that would be our final answer. Okay, uh, gym membership, calculate the standard The standard deviation can be written in this form. Okay, so a non-calculator standard deviation question. Um, let's see, five members find the values of A and B. So we're, it's asking us to calculate the standard deviation. So we go through the same process as we normally would. We find the mean. Um, again, there's two there's two different steps for this, um, two different methods for finding standard deviation. If you use the other one, then it should give you the same answer in the end. The working just might look slightly different as we progress through. So 1 add 4 is 5 for the mean. That's, uh, add a 6 is 11, 14, 20. So we get 20 divided by 5, which is 4. And we're hoping it's a nice number because we have to do this non-calculator. I'm going to do the method using the three bars or three columns in the table. So we've got our x in the first column x minus x bar in the second, x bar being our mean, and x minus x bar squared in the third. So our values for x, 1, 4, 6, 3, and 6. Our x minus x bar are uh, each one of these minus 4. So 1 take away 4, negative 3. 4 take away 4, 0. 6 take away 4, 2. 3 take away 4, negative 1. And 6 take away 4, again, 2. Um, so... Square in each of these, they're all going to become positives. When we square any number, we get a positive answer. So negative 3 squared is 9. 0 squared is 0. 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. And this gives us what we're looking for at the bottom. We're looking for a total uh, of this column. So we get 10, 18. Okay, so our total is our sum of x minus x bar 
squared, and that's what we're going to use in the formula. So the formula for standard deviation, given in the formula sheet, is the sum of x minus x bar squared all over n minus 1, n being how many numbers we started with. So we've got the top line is 18. That's what we calculated using the table. There are five numbers, so it's 5 take away 1, and that equals the square root of 18 over 6. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, no, it's not 18 over 6. What am I doing? I've added uh, 18 over 4. Honestly, uh, 18 over 4. So when you're square rooting a fraction, then what we're going to do is square root top and square root bottom. So we end up with square root of 18 over square root of 4. Uh, I'll just write that out for the purposes of the video. Um, but you could probably do that in your head because the square root of 4 is 2. However, we're going to start with the top line. Root 18 is a third, and that's why we end up with this a root b term. Uh, that simplifies to root 9, root 2. Square root of 4 is just 2. Um, which is good because that pa uh, that pairs up with what we were asked for in the question. And the square root of 9 on the top line is 3. So we have 3 root 2 for the top line for our numerator and 2 for our denominator. And that uh, checks out according to the question we've got in the form A root B over 2. So that would be our final answer. Okay, uh, we might want to write A equals 3, B equals 2 because the question asks for the values of A and B. Okay, question 13. Uh, looks like it's going to be a simultaneous equation. We've got two sets uh, of equations representing two straight lines. We want to find algebraically the coordinates of P, the point of intersection. So let's go for elimination for this one. So we've got 3x minus y equals 2 and x plus 3y equals 19. So I'll call that equation 1 and 2. What I'm going to do is scale these so that we, we can eliminate one of the terms. Uh, I normally go for the y uh, unless it's really um, beneficial to go for the x term. So... Um, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. So we get 9x minus 3y equals 6. I'll call that equation 3. And x plus 3y equals 19. I'm going to call that equation 4. Um, it's the same as equation 2, though. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do here is the, re the reason we multiplied or scaled that equation uh, uh, by 3, uh, by multiplying by 3, is so we have the, these 3y coefficients. The sim signs for those terms are different, so to eliminate them, we're going to have to add. So we're going to do 3, add on 4. That's going to give us 9x plus x would be 10x. This term, add on this term, so negative 3y, uh, add on 3y would cancel, which is what we're looking for. They would eliminate. 16 add 9 is 25. And if we divide by 10, we get x equals 2.5. Okay, so we found the x value, uh, or the x coordinate in this case. So we're going to then use that to find the corresponding y coordinate. So we use the x equals 2.5 and we are going to use an equation one, uh, sorry, equation two because that has no negatives to deal with. So um, x plus 3y equals 19. We're going to take the x is 2.5. So I'm replacing the x here. Everything else stays the same and it's just a case of balancing out at this stage. So we take away 2.5 from both sides. That gives us 16.5. Divide by 3 and we get 5.5. So the points of intersection here, that she was asking for, is 2.5 for the x-coordinate, 5.5 for the y-coordinate. And that's our point of intersection. Okay, uh, we've got a parabola here. Bit of completed square form. Um, x plus a squared. Okay, so uh, state the value of a. Okay, so a, um, the, the, the part inside the bracket for completed square form tells us where the turning point is. Um, so it's telling us the turning point is at x equals negative 5. If we were to transfer that back into the bracket, it would be x plus 5. So um, the a value would be 5. The point negative 3, 8 lies on the parabola. So it's given that in the diagram. Calculate the value of b. Okay, so what we know so far is that because the turning point is at x equals 5. Well, I don't know why I drew that dot there. The turning point is at x equals 5. Okay, that's the equation of this dotted line of symmetry. We know that the equation... Oh, sorry, I'm just getting this all mixed up. x equals negative 5. So the, turn, the turning point is at x equals negative 5, which is what is stated in the question right down there. So I shouldn't really make a mistake there. Um, the bracket for the completed square form will be x plus 5 squared. OK, so we, we established that in part A. What we know, if you look at this equation, we want to find B. 
That's what we've been asked for. We also have a missing y and x value. However, we were giving, given uh, a y and an x value right here. And that's why we were given this. So we can substitute these values in for y and x. Now we only have one unknown in the equation, so we can just solve. Negative 3 plus 5 in the bracket is 2, so 2 squared plus b. 2 squared is 4. Take away 4 from both sides, and that gives us b equals 1, or 4 equals b if you prefer. Um, and that was all. Calculate the value of b. That's us completed that question. Great. Uh, 15. Oh, it's looking like a similar shape. You can see a triangle with another triangle. Um, what I would normally do is draw the two triangles separately. Um, I think it makes it a lot easier. So, uh, rough sketch here. I do mean very rough. Uh, small triangle Ugh. Uh, is x by 5. And the larger triangle, roughly the same shape, is x plus 2.6 for the base and 7 for the slope inside. So, we want to calculate the value of x. Again, with similar shapes, there are lots of variations on the, the working that you can use. It's really up to you what you feel comfortable with. Um, so I will go through with the, the length scale factor. The x that I'm looking for is in the smaller um, triangle. So I'm going to do a reduction scale factor. There is an x in the bigger triangle, but this x term is more complicated than this x term. So I'm going to go for a reduction. Let's see how that pans out. So length scale factor would be five over seven. Okay, so it's saying, we're saying the smaller triangle is five sevenths the size of the larger triangle. Now, if we, if we go through this process, we've got five over seven. Uh, so the X value for a triangle here, is gonna be five over seven times this corresponding side, X plus 2.6. Okay, so what we're getting here is just an equation. The fraction within the equation, we can multiply both sides by 7 to get a more straightforward equation to solve. And then we can multiply with the bracket. We're kind of working in limited space here, but 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2.6. Well, 5 twos are 10. 5 times 0 0.6 is 3. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we get 5x plus Eight. Okay, so it's working out as quite a nice uh, number there for for us um, to work with in a non-calculator paper. So, hold on, 13, 5, yeah, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 0.6 is 3, we add them together, we get 13, not 8. That makes sense. Okay, so 7x equals 5x plus 13. Take away 5x from both sides, we get 2x equals 13. And divide by 2, we get x equals 6.5. There are alternative methods which will lead to the same kind of working. So we can also, um, so that could be method 1. Method 2, we could also say that the ratio of the, the, the sides um, has got to be the same. So we could say it's 7 over 5 for the, the, the two triangles has got to be equal to x plus 2.6 over x. Um, so that divided by that has got to be equal to that divided by that if these shapes are in fact similar, which they are because they are both one triangle is exactly within the other. So in, the internal angles have got to be equal. We can then cross multiply. So we get 7x equals 5 bracket x plus 2.6. And if you look at this working here and this working here, um, that's exactly the same. So the follow through afterwards would be exactly the same as these three lines. Um, it depends which way you have learned this this topic, which way you prefer. Um, they, they both work exactly, the, they give you the exact same result. Um, it's just a slightly different approach in getting there. Um, okay, so the answer was x equals 6.5 centimeters. And that's that question finished. Okay, that was the last question in the paper. Good. So um, hopefully you found that really helpful. Um, if you did, then please remember and like the video, subscribe and uh, share. Uh, also check out www.highschoolmaths.co.uk for other resources for um, all levels of maths and uh, check out some of our other videos. Catch you later.